much, uh, Chair. Um, first of all, I just want to thank um, Deirdre, Geraldine, uh, Mark and Dee Cara for coming in today. I think, as Catherine has said, Senator Arda has said, it is vital that we hear these stories. It is vital that you come in. And in fairness to you, Cara, that was one of the most powerful testimonies that I've ever heard. Uh, and, you know, if you weren't and didn't know you were 12 years of age, you would never say you were 12 years of age. It was powerful. So well done. And that's not Plum Austin in any way, a shape or form, but it was important that you came in and made that statement on behalf of Neil and John. So well done in relation to that. And as, as Senator Tully or Deputy Tully says, you've made history today. So well done. Uh, just a couple of, uh, of points, I suppose, in fairness, and the psychiatrists in, in the Kildare area, and obviously I want to start w w with the special needs uh, group in a time, just to thank them for all the work that they've done over the years. And I know when you started out, you had a small number of people, but that's growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, and I've attended a number of your events uh, over the years, and, and we'll continue to do that. But for me, the one thing that I get from your events is the way that you treat the siblings, that, that this is family and the way it affects family. And I'd like to hear maybe a comment from yourselves on how that inclusiveness is, is, is so important, that you're not isolating that person or that, that child that, 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 that has the, the autism or is that autistic person, and how important important it is that we, we include um, all, uh, all family members. Like Cara has made her, her testimony today and, and on behalf of her brothers, I think it's important that message goes through to the committee. I know, Chair, when we set up the committee, uh, we spoke about a nine-month remit. So it is very going to be a short space of time, Mark, that we have to actually put everything together. And what we want is what, what you four have done for us today, to hear the stories. Because we had the HSE, uh, as Deputy Tully has said, in here before us. And, you know, in fairness to them, they answered the questions. But uh, does anyone believe what, what they were answering? I don't, because in my clinics uh, and the people I deal with, it, it's just continuous and continuous, and they're not getting the services. And that is the bottom line, and that's the bottom line that you guys have said again today. And something needs to change. And, you know, you, you, you talk about oversight, Mark, and, you know, this is a political committee, but we have a Minister for Health that has to take responsibility for this as well, and I think that's need, needs where, where this needs to go. So if there's to be an oversight of the HSE, um, it has to start there and it has to start with the oversight that, that, that that's there and I think that's whatever government is in place of the day uh, you know that that's where it has to start and whatever recommendations this committee has and you know we spoke about summer provision uh, and again we spoke about the motion we brought forward we're dependent on that to be implemented and we will use every political force that we have to ensure that that happens but there has to be there has to be the government of the day has to make sure that whatever recommendations are there uh, and whatever services are needed that they're followed up on and that that that's essential for that like Cara spoke of the house being on fire that's what's happening out there like every day and I'm sure it's the same for colleagues I get calls from people who can't get schools who can't get services who can't get the melatonin that, that and maybe again um, Deirdre and Geraldine and I'm not sure Mark if you, if you want to speak on that how it's affecting the people because that's a huge thing you know rest by care is huge for families that break that the families get. And you spoke, Mark, how your lives have been turned upside down and you used words like horrific and humiliating and words like that. And that is unbelievable for us to hear, in fairness. But that's what we're hearing every day, day in, day out. And House on Fire has got to be put out in some way and sh shape and form. I, I'm a member of the Social Protection Committee and we've talked about the means test in relation to cares. That needs to be got rid of. So many people are losing out on cares allowance. You want to see money because a lot of the problems I see with, with, with people I deal with is that they're paying privately for services and they can't afford it. They're going to community welfare offices. I've raised this before the committee at various committees and it's just not there. They just can't afford it and it's got the game that this is all about money. So I suppose just to sum up and I know I've only a minute left, Chair, just a couple of questions. Just the effect on, on civil I suppose, uh, and how your action group, how, how, do you, how you treat that. And then, Mark, again, just, just maybe that the cost of wh how, what the cost has affected your family, so we get some idea of the money that we're talking about. Thanks, Chair. Mark and Cara first. Sure, so it's just mentioned carers there, like so like a carer would be classed as a young carer. I never thought I was a carer until I went to a carers forum once. Uh, the costs, just to answer your question directly, would say uh, Neil wants to go on a, what we call a special patrol, sometimes twice in an evening. It's one hour of time. This is what we do in the evening. This is how a Saturday is taken up. You're talking five to six hundred kilometres a day, or sorry, a week, 
being driven. Probably anywhere up to 100 euros, I'll, I'll just say. Uh, summertime, like, simple thing. He turns on every light in the house. This is what we do, turning off the lights. Our ESP bill is through the roof. Like, but we don't complain about those, but these are extra costs. And then the CARES thing, you are right to bring up the means mm. test, because it is crippling that it feels like, on the ground, how it actually feels is that the government wants to have an argument with you over pennies when there's not a realisation that your life has been devastated, that you're doing this 24-7 care. My wife has a degree, a master's. She was taken from her career because of this. It is, like, it, it, it is really tough, and I think that that doesn't get across that your life has been basically destroyed here and that then they're, you, you know, you're, you're having the arguing over the means and things like that. So if I was here an X amount, but once you go over that, then you're basically, it comes off the carers allowance. So, I mean, like Family Cares Ireland will bring this up all the time and they, they are right on this point that you're getting into an argument. Like it's even welfare. The fact that carers is seen as welfare is an issue. That, I mean, like, yeah. I'm sorry, but yes. my wife, I, she kind of takes offence to the thing that she's a, a welfare recipient. Like, she worked so hard her whole life and studied so hard, but she, it, it's like, cares to me is not welfare. It's like, you have a 24-7 job. I look back now to when you, you might have worked only eight hours a day. God be with the days. Uh, it's 24-7 now. It's 168 hours. I have to sleep with Neil at night time. It's 20, it actually is 24-7. So as Cara said, when people say to us, have a nice weekend, yeah. we don't have a nice weekend. You know, so I'm, I'm just laying it out there. It is really bad on the ground. So that's Thank you. Point, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, the, the, it cares is 24 hours a day. I mean, I had... I had a good job. I, I used to teach swimming to people with special needs. I loved it. But who can you get to mind a, a, an autistic child? I, I would love to work, but unfortunately, if my son is going to have a seizure, it's in the morning. So I can't imagine any employer keeping me on if I ring up within half an hour's notice going, sorry, I can't come in today because he sleeps for five to six hours afterwards. He needs that sleep. His body is exhausted. Um, his sister... When we just, Mark is asking about siblings, his sister's amazing. She has a, had her own mental health issues now after COVID and that, but she, we have included siblings in our club from the very, very beginning because we have felt that they've been ignored. If there's a special group, it's a special group and only the special children can come. We have brought them in. They come to realise they're not alone. They interact Jared does fun and games. They interact, they play with the kids, they help out. Jared's older son, who is, is on the spectrum, he's one of our volunteers. He's fabulous with our children. We need to include our siblings. They need more support. Um, it's just, it, you know... And it's it shows them they're not on their own. They're not on their own. They get to have a chat with an, a, an another sibling absolutely. that's gone, yeah. you know, that is in the same boat. The same boat. Bent. And going through the same. Yeah. And that not to be afraid to, to use talk. the word autism, to, yeah. to, to say, look, my brother is different, you know. Um, my daughter will not speak up for herself at all. But by God, you say something about her brother and you will be sorry. Because the latest trend in school is if somebody's messing is to go, or are you autistic? Yeah. So, um, and it's not nice. No. Um, she has stood up big time. I brought it up with her, her home tutor. Um, because if there's children on the milder end of the spectrum and they're in the school, they're not going to want to tell somebody that they have autism if it's treated as a joke. Mm -hmm. So it's good that the, she's there, she'll stand up for somebody else. <coughs> uh, like Cara there, they, they stand up for their brothers and sisters, they probably mm -hmm. won't say anything for themselves, they won't ask for anything for themselves. No. But the, they love it. She now volunteers in the club. She's brilliant. She's been missing out because she has camogie the same night. <laughs> but... Um, like to come to all the events, we include them all in, in our events. We run Silent Santi. We had a Halloween party. We do trips down the river, which they find very calming. There's a lovely boat that goes down the river in a thigh. Um, but we have to include the siblings because we, we were involved in the club and we were sitting outside with the siblings and they were losing out. They weren't they could playing see, with the They could kids. see their brothers and sisters in there having fun and here they were sitting outside the door looking in. So that's why when we started the group up, we said we would not exclude siblings. And the parents love it because they're not trying to find someone else to mind the kids while they come to the group, which and, is... Yeah, and an unexpected, uh, lovely surprise from the club is that the parents support each other because we're all there with all our children. 
special needs and mainstream children were there together. So for those starting on the journey, we're kind of saying, you know, there Here you are. are, this is what you do. But listening to Mark there, this, my child is 18. This has been, Jairus is keen, uh, yeah, and 22 yeah. and 18. These issues have been going on since my child was diagnosed when he was three and a half. I was counting up when Mark was think, speaking. I reckon he's had about eight OTs. Eight different OTs. His speech therapist um, is the same. Our last family meeting, I had a new social worker, uh, a new OT, and there was a, well, he's, he never needed physiotherapist. I didn't even know they had changed. They were gone. They had changed. They'd left. And I'd just like to bring up something about carers. When the child with autism, at age 18, they are not cured of autism. It's very unfair. Since my young lad turned 18, every year just before Christmas, the carers is reviewed for me. I'm a single mom, so I rely on the carers. And I shouldn't have to go to the doctor to get a letter to state that, oh, he's cured of autism, because he's not cured of autism. He's always going to be autistic. I'm trying to get him to have an independent life. There's no adult services for him because he's on the mild, he's mild and moderate. And his younger brother's the same, so he's coming up through the system now. He's turning 18 in January, and we're going to have the same fight again. I'm told by the team, oh, you contact your mental health service. Now, why come from a disability service and then put her kids into a mental health service. It makes no sense. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks very much, uh, um, Senator Wall. Um, 